As seen on TV, products are all the rage. But how do you know which ones are super and which ones are stinkers? That's easy. We're going to tell you. The first tool on our list today is the Airhawk Pro. Its claim is pretty straightforward to inflate tires fast and easy. The as seen on TV commercial for this one actually makes it seem fun to get a flat tire. So let's open up this box and get inside. We'll pull out the cardboard insert and inside we'll find an instruction manual and also what looks like a carrying pouch. And there's the Airhawk Pro, pretty nifty looking. It includes a battery that looks like any rechargeable tool battery, an AC adapter, I assume to charge said battery, and another plug-in that I almost thought was another battery, but it's actually a 12 volt adapter so you can plug the Airhawk into your car. And there's also a six inch flexible air hose that pushes that air through. So let's get this battery charged and we'll plug the adapter into the battery and then plug the adapter into our AC outlet. In this case, the charging light isn't actually on the battery, but it's on the AC adapter. So we'll let that go for a couple of hours and once it turns green, it's charged. All right, so let's plug the power pack into the Airhawk Pro and get to work. Immediately, I noticed that as soon as you plug in the power pack, a little LED light on the front lights up and it would be plenty bright right for working at night. There's also an LCD display on the back with buttons that control the Airhawk Pro. This thing looks and feels pretty sturdy with decent weight, but can it blow? Oh, and there's also a steel pin tip and a plastic wide tip for blowing up other stuff. All right, so let's put this thing to work. The first step is to loosen up the attachment lock, and then we'll thread the six inch flexible hose right in there. It took a little bit to kind of push it in and to get the threads running, but once the thread started, it went down nice and tight, and then we just tighten up the attachment lock a little bit, and we're good to go. According to the dashboard in my car, I have four tires that are a little bit low, so let's pump it up. We'll attach the air hose to the valve, and then we'll power up the Airhawk Pro. It's got three different pressure formats, bar, which is metric, KPA, which is kilopascal, and then PSI, which is what we're gonna use, pounds per square inch, which we'll set at 35. Pull of the trigger gets the Airhawk Pro going, and as you can see, the pressure is building. It'll display what the actual pressure is as it inflates the tire. And when we got to 35, the Airhawk Pro stopped. Now that was pretty easy, actually much faster and better than firing up my compressor and running a hose around the car. All right, so let's check the dashboard, and sure enough, that rear right tire is at 35 pounds. Now, I decided to go ahead and check it with a manual pressure gauge, and the pressure gauge also reads 35 pounds. So the Airhawk Pro is pretty accurate. I decided to inflate a couple more things, and using the steel pin tip, I decided to inflate this football that's been pretty out of air for a long time, and in a quick nine pounds, pump that football right up. How much you want to make a bet I could throw a football over them mountains? And using the plastic wide tip, I decided to inflate this pool toy to see just how long it would take. I ran the Airhawk Pro, but mysteriously, after about 30 five seconds, it stopped, and I had to keep restarting it. Nothing in the manual explained this, and I made a phone call to their customer service, and they told me that it requires a little bit of back pressure or the Airhawk Pro will stop. So in other words, this inflatable toy that had no air in it caused the Airhawk Pro to just stop, which is not a big deal, but I had to sit there while I inflated this thing, which took about 20 minutes to do, but it would have been much longer if I wasn't using a pump, and the Airhawk Hawk Pro finally inflated this entire pink flamingo. So the bottom line is I really like the Airhawk Pro. It does exactly what it says it'll do and works well. So the Airhawk Pro gets a big thumbs up. Next up in our tools tested is the Tiger Wrench. It claims to be a 48 in one socket wrench that will replace an entire socket set. Based on the commercial, this thing looks like it should be awesome and would be a DIY guy's dream tool. Let's see about that. We'll cut into this clamshell packaging and get that Tiger Wrench out of there. It feels pretty sturdy and well-built and has four sockets on each end. Okay, now that's only eight. So how do we get to 48? Well, in each rotating head, there's both metric and standard measurements. Plus, 
They claim it'll do six point and 12 point and spline and square. So you add all that up and you could probably work your way to 48. So to test this thing out, I got a piece of wood and I put three bolts through it with corresponding nuts that measure three eighths or 10 millimeters, seven sixteenths or 11 millimeters, and 9 sixteenths, which is 14 millimeters. Just to double check my sizes, I took the 3 eighths wrench and it fit perfectly on that 3 eighths inch nut. Now, let's try the Tiger wrench. To my surprise, the 3 eighths socket on the Tiger wrench was too large for this nut. It's not 3 eighths. Well, that won't work. So I went up to the next size, 7 16 and that did fit on the 7 16 nut, as well as the 9 16 fit as well. But what about this 3 8 Multi-tools are nothing new. I found this old wrench in my garage that I think was my dad's, and it's got to be at least 50 years old. Plus, there's always the adjustable crescent wrench, which will fit virtually any nut or bolt. I also noticed that the 7 16 inch nut fit perfectly in my wrench, but when I put it in the Tiger wrench, there was a lot of play, and that's no good. So based on the fact that their socket sizes are not accurate, there's no way I could like the Tiger wrench, so it gets a big stinker. The speed out is the next tool we're going to test, and it is a damaged screw extractor that removes any screw or bolt that's stripped in 10 seconds or less. The TV commercial sure makes it look simple and easy to use. So does it unscrew like it says it does? Well, let's get into this clamshell package and pull out the little box of speed out bits. There's a one page instruction sheet that should explain how this works. Let's give it a whirl. I went ahead and took a piece of wood and then with my drill, I drilled in a wood screw nice and tight into that piece of wood. Then with that same bit, I ran it into the screw head to roughen it up and pretty much wreck it, so a Phillips head screwdriver had no chance of getting that screw out. Okay, it's a pretty small screw, so I will take the smallest speed out bit, and this thing is marked with an A and a B, so basically you put the A side into the drill bit, and with the drill in reverse, you drill a hole into the head of the screw or bolt. Then it should be as easy as flipping that bit around to the extraction side, and again with the drill in reverse, slowly start the drill and it should remove the screw, but in this case, nothing not a budge, it just kept spinning. There was no way that this was gonna get that screw out of the piece of wood. So I decided to get the next size up speed out bit and try that. Again, drilling a hole into the top of the screw, flipping the bit around to the extraction side and slowly turning it. Now it almost felt like it was gonna grab it, but it didn't. There's no way speed out was gonna get this screw out of this wood. I even tried the next largest size bit, still no luck. So here's my technique since speed out is not working. I use a Dremel with a cutting attachment and I just make a straight line cut into the head of any screw that's stripped and with a straight screwdriver, the screw came right out. So not only did the speed out not remove the screw in 10 seconds or less, it didn't even remove the screw. So for me, the speed out gets a big fat stinker. And finally in our tools tested, it's the multi-cut three-in-one cutting tool. Its claim, the most versatile cutting tool. According to the commercial, the multi-cut three-in-one tool replaces three different cutting tools. So let's see. Cutting once again into this clamshell packaging, we'll pull out the multi-tool and a little instruction sheet. This thing feels super sturdy. It has a safety lock to keep the tool closed when you're not using it, and it even has replacement blades that store in the handle. But does it cut? We're gonna test the five examples shown on the instruction sheet to see if the multi-cut really cuts it. First up, some thick marine rope. And the multi-cut definitely cut right through this like butter. What about some heavy-duty three-strand Romex electrical wire? We'll be using the titanium wire cutter portion of the tool for that. This required a little bit more squeeze strength, but cut right through it in a snap. So far, it's pretty impressive, so this plastic chain should be no match for the multi-cut three-in-one, and it isn't. So let's head outside and find a tree branch. And this one's about three quarters of an inch in diameter, and the multi-cut tool did the job there as well. Lastly, what about some thick leather? That could be a tough job, but 
not for the multi-cut 3-in-1 tool. It's sliced right into it with perfect straight cuts. You can also use the multi-cut 3-in-1 tool as a utility knife. By sliding the base release lever, the edge of the blade protrudes out and acts as a knife. A sharp one at that. So the multi-cut 3-in-1 cutting tool really is a versatile cutting tool. I'm sold on it and it gets a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed this as seen on TV tested video, then I'm sure you'll love my other ones. Just click the screen to watch more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.